a long line of people making their way to the Israeli-Syrian border. The IDF's cameras keep a close watch. Last year around this time, this was a war zone. We received orders to get ready for the evacuation of the White Helmets out of Syria. Who are they? I never heard of the White Helmets before. We prepared for a complicated and difficult task. It was nerve-wracking. It was nighttime. We need to get here on foot. It's like a movie. Timing was absolutely critical. We knew that if we miss a chance on a specific night, the next day it might not be possible. When you see the eyes of a mother holding her child, waiting for us to let them through, and you realize that if she will cross, her life will be saved. If she doesn't, then it's all over. Under the cover of secrecy, an operation to evacuate over 300 members of the Syrian White Helmets was launched last year. Most of them fled the Syrian regime forces who targeted aid workers for supporting rebel groups, a humanitarian effort that symbolized the end of an era. As they crossed into Israel, I saw fear and expectation in their eyes at the same time. The crossing was shocking to them. They were met by soldiers who were smiling at them, giving them water. There wasn't much time for conversation. They just said thank you. This operation was the official ending of Operation Good Neighbor. Today, the reality on the Golan Heights is changing. After five years of absence, the IDF is watching the Syrian army return to the area with reinforcements, the Lebanese Hezbollah and Iranian-backed militias. Operation Good Neighbor saw Israel treated thousands of wounded Syrians who reached the border fence. For five years, Israel reached out to the local Syrians caught in the crossfire, and in return, the area was calm. The fact is that we had no attacks or incidents in this area, none. Now the situation is a bit different, but still, I believe that when you do a good thing, it has a long-term effect. For the people living here, Israel is not a devil or a monster. But the winds of change are blowing here. What was relevant here five years ago is no longer relevant today. Today the Syrian army is in charge and we expect them to be responsible and take charge in the area and not allow other groups to operate in this piece of land. Now the Israeli army reacts after each border incident. We convey messages to the other side while trying to secure the parameter. Work is being done here to keep it calm. We try to act in a way that will make them rethink their strategy and eventually drive them out, whether by attack or by other means. According to foreign press reports, Israel has struck Hezbollah and Syrian posts many times over the past few years, signaling that they are not welcome here. Driving along the border fence, one can easily spot the Syrian tanks and foot patrols on the other side of the fence. Since the Syrian army has taken back control in August of last year, Hezbollah is busy building an infrastructure here. We see them and we realize what they're up to, if it's collecting intelligence or preparing to launch terror attacks when the order drops. Hezbollah, with the help of the Syrian soldiers, is building observation posts along the border, systematically collecting intel, just like in southern Lebanon. We're witnessing preparations of a terror organization that will want to act one day. A few months ago, Israel struck a group of Hezbollah fighters trying to launch an armed drone, an act for which Israel has taken full responsibility in an attempt to rewrite the rules of engagement in the region. We try to act in a way that will make them rethink their strategy and eventually drive them out, whether by attack or by other means. It's apple season here in the Golan, and the local farmers are busy at work in all of the surrounding areas. Many tourists visit the area despite the threats. Five years ago, the IDF was quick to react to an evolving situation. Today, when the reality is changing again, the challenges are much greater.